Hello and welcome to another episode of Virtual Rambling. I'm your host, Oryx. My last episode of Virtual Rambling was a little bit of a downer. It was all about wildfires in California and gentrification. And it left me feeling a little bit miserable, so I thought, this time for Virtual Rambling, I'll do something upbeat. I'll do something a bit more... less depressing. So here we are in a game... about the ritual mass murder of thousands in order to appease strange alien gods by a group of rather nasty people. <laughs> Welcome to Paradise Killer, a game by Kaizen, and I've started this walk in a bit of liminal space, so here I am between bars over there, you can see through the bars is uh, essentially a prison island for a, uh, a supposed killer in this game and your job as the player is to uh, either conclude or debunk whether the character currently imprisoned is guilty of the murder of several high-ranking people on this island. And uh, through the process you might identify and enact justice on the captured culprit or another culprit depending on your investigation. You can, I think, given evidence, accuse one of roughly eight or so characters on the island, all of whom have motives and suspicious characteristics. So now we're on the island proper. This place is called Paradise Iteration Number 24. And because in this game, Paradise has not been achieved by this group of individuals called the Syndicate. Now the Syndicate want to appease a bunch of weird alien gods. And to do so they create a paradise and within Paradise, they enact a kind of mass slaughter, a kind of a ritualistic thing in order to appease said gods and essentially bring them alive. And what happens then, goodness knows, perhaps they're hoping for an age of prosperity or something. The fact of the matter is, is that the Syndicate are clearly not very nice people because they do this. So there are rather interesting themes at play here um, because someone has kind of gone ahead and killed the highest ranking people within the syndicate. You're like, well, so someone's taken it upon themselves to kind of kill a bunch of bad guys. There is absolutely no good moral standing here. <laughs> Someone has essentially killed the killers, um, and in doing so, possibly doomed paradise. But what does that actually mean? Uh, so, all of this kind of stuff is gone into through the game. It's got some very strange and fantastic lore. Um, 
when I was playing this, I was like, you know, this lore is like on the level of something from a really good metaphysical anime series. Um, I don't know, one that immediately comes to mind is, uh, is Devil Man. And the kind of interesting use of, uh, like, Christian imagery in that series. And there's a little bit of that in here, too. Oh. <laughs> Someone has literally just surprised me there. So, this character, Lady Love Dies, is who we are. She is, uh, her title is Investigation Freak. What that actually means, I'm not sure. She's, uh, what I assume is a bit like the Inquisition. Um, she goes around making sure that demons don't infiltrate the Syndicate Society and ensure the, uh, the failure of the Syndicate's mission, which is to create paradise. And since we're on the 24th iteration of the island, it means the demons have succe succeeded 24 times so far. Or uh, things have gone awry 24 times anyway. <laughs> and the characters, as you can you see, are just wonderfully flamboyant. Uh, strange like caricatures it's very hard to describe them because they're such an eclectic bunch none of whom you can really trust this island is a thousand thousand little tragedies waiting to be discovered I don't like this. <laughs> I promise I won't be uh, talking to too many characters in this. I don't want to give too much of the storyline away. Um, for those who would like to discover this game for yourself. That being said, since it's in review, that up there is where you start the game as your character is incarcerated for previous failings to protect uh, an iteration of the island something went awry, she got fooled into doing something she shouldn't have and was subsequently incarcerated for three million days so that alone tells you that things don't quite work as they might normally do in this place called paradise Something I love about this game, and something that was clearly evident from the very first trailer, was just... <sighs> I don't know, just the, the wonderful kind of and weird use of different um, cultures that seems to be at play here. Now, this game strikes me, like I said, anime-esque in its use of lore and kind of metaphysics. And, you know, there they've got, like, um, flags that they traditionally fly in Japan. I think it's on Boys Day. I don't know the Japanese name for it. It escapes me because I've known this at one stage. I can't remember now. But, uh, yeah, those, uh, those, like, koi flags. That blue character you can see down there has the head of a fox. He's a, he or she is a demon um, and a bit of a trickster and you definitely cannot trust them, it seems. Now, you'll also notice a lot of brutalist architecture here. Look at the kind of hard lines on some of the things, uh, but then You've also got like, um, almost like holiday resort 
apartment blocks here and these are for all the the citizens who kind of undergo the mass slaughter so uh, it, it's weird in that you know a terrible fate awaits all of these people um so they've been given some sort of mediterranean-esque life to live in this weird little hodgepodge paradise that the the syndicate have constructed for their terrible means and it's uh, it's just a really fascinating interesting weird idea and i love it <laughs> <laughs> there he is. Never trust in someone who puts an emoji over the privates. So yeah, I um, I remember chatting a little bit. You know, I say chatting. It was a tweet. I tweeted um, something on. Twitter about this game and how gorgeous the environment looks and the developers said that they just wanted to give players essentially somewhere to like holiday and you know that's what this island is like isn't it it's like holiday embodied you've got palm trees you've got Egyptian-esque architecture and pyramids you've, you've got some sort of horrible brutalist architecture that looks like you might I don't know like you might visit on some sort of alternative tourist destination and I believe this uh, Actually, I won't go into that. Sorry. <laughs> Ooh, mystery. <laughs> so yeah, look, we've got these weird kind of Egyptian-esque obelisks. Um, deck chairs and umbrellas. What says holiday more than that, eh? those apartment blocks that we saw previously and this is like a super super stereotypical British thing to kind of say but guess what I'm British I'm also a stereotype it seems um, Tenerife <laughs> from the month I was born to perhaps when I was up to 15 years old and since um, I, I've been holidaying in Tenerife every now and again <laughs> and this game reminds me so much of Tenerife Tenerife is a canary island off the coast of Africa. Um, it's a Spanish owned, so, but it's also got its own kind of uh, Canarian culture. And it's just a place where British people and, you know, lots of other kind of countries, uh, French, Germans, Russians, go to holiday. And the apartment blocks that you see in the kind of most touristy areas of Tenerife are just like the ones on Paradise Iteration 24. It's, you know, it seems incredibly intentional and almost like a direct nod to like British holiday culture and I love it 
Um, Lady Love Dies, as you might have noticed from the little conversation I had earlier, also has quite the British accent. So, yeah, it's, it's interesting. I like it. It's weird. <laughs> um, you might also kind of twig that Vaporwave has also been a, uh, a massive influence here. Now, I don't know that much about Vaporwave. Um, as far as I'm aware, it kind of... Oh gosh, what decade would it have been? As far as I'm aware, it came, kind of came out of the 90s and it was almost like a swan song to the 80s in that a lot of what made the 80s the 80s was fading away and being replaced by modern culture and uh, I think there was an album by someone called Mosaic that really started off the vaporwave movement and it, it kind of uses um, like empty neon lit malls, uh, some like Japanese influences. Um, there's obviously a lot of kind of use of uh, very stereotypically 80s colors, such as like quite a lot of purple. Um, and as you probably noticed from the island, quite a lot of like white and tiles, um, like Greek columns, some brutali brutalist architecture. Uh, again, I'm just kind of ad libbing here. I don't know that much about Vaporwave. Um, I know I quite like the music style, which is. Um, I guess kind of electro but with kind of added glitches and kind of 80s reference and I'll probably sound right foolish trying to kind of describe these things probably to people who know a lot more about this than I do <laughs> um, I've probably chosen a bit of a poor direction to kind of wander in. Because um, I, I feel like I'm on part of the island that may or may not circle around on itself. I might have to do a wee bit of jumping here. Look at me, ignoring all these collectibles. What are you playing at, son? Ooh, some weird pink mark over there. I'll investigate that later. <laughs> can I walk around this area? Oh, yes, I can. Look at that. Earlier I fell into some water and I ended up respawning. I was like, oh, I didn't know I could even die in this game. So this is, uh, I guess, some sort of power plant. There's agricultural growing thingies here. Are they growing weed? That won't surprise me. Goodness knows what that thing is. There's the moon. There's a story behind that too. <laughs> I'm just looking for a place where I can... Ascend. 
Um, something I love about the island in Paradise Killer is that it's very multi-layered so as you can see we've been exploring a lot of the kind of outskirts of the island and the very bottom layer of it um, but as we kind of explore more you'll see that the island actually has quite a lot of upper tiers now something that Paradise Killer really strikes a resemblance to in my mind is an immersive sim game something like Deus Ex or Thief where you get an environment or say Dishonored where you get an environment that's got a lot of verticality to it and I know some people hate that word and think it's a bit tired but it's true in this instance um, you have you know the kind of ground level stuff oh, this is a reality folding drive again there's probably something about that and explaining why we're here and doing what we're doing but you'll see up there those buildings you can reach those you can and a lot of them you can um, climb to the top of or get an elevator to the top um, this kind of verticality in games reminds me so much of immersive sims and like Immersive Sims 2, there seems to be, you know, so many funky little um, mechanics uh, at play here. Um, there's like weird bloodletting shrines, there's like an economy system with blood crystals. So there seems to be a lot of blood in this game. <laughs> uh, you, uh, you can collect items and use them, so I think before we... I believe we saw a camera. I don't know what that's for. I'll be looking into that later. There's a night and day cycle. I don't know if that influences anything. Um, the characters you talk to, you can uh, influence into telling you more, or if you get on their bad side, maybe tell you less. Um, you draw your evidence together into a conclusion and ultimately use that to kind of point a finger at who you believe is the culprit for the murder. Um, so there's, you know, this is not a traditional immersive sim, but I believe it's a very unique and interesting example of the genre as it were. You know, it's first person, but there's there's no shooting, there's no sneaking, as far as I'm aware. Where am I going? <laughs> I believe I've walked myself into a corner here. Just have a little leap over here. Go a little cross country. Um, there's also no falling damage, which I'm very glad about. So I'm currently below the courthouse. Let's see if we can find a way back up. There's that troublesome demon again. Hmm. Cross country indeed. Just jump on this. Just close your eyes, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't like heights. Thank goodness for no falling damage, eh? Ah. Uh, so I could have gone this way. 
I love the kind of chunkiness of the text as well. I don't know why, but it's it's so nice to just like be able to read something. <laughs> None of these pithy little fonts that you get with ridiculously high resolutions. And as you'll notice, a lot of like sculpture in this game has this kind of weird purple, like glitteryness to it. And it seems to be a material that a lot of sculptures are made out of. And like, what is this all about? And it, it's something I hope is kind of gone into a little bit as well. Because there is a lot of sculpture in this game. Um, lots of um, sculptures of the weird and wonderful deities. Um, that kind of permeate this culture. Yeah, it's almost like a, a kind of statue park. Huh. Oh, we're back at the sisters and housing again. That's interesting. I like these signifiers as well. See those neon lights running up that kind of tower there. That signifies an elevator. So, I'm going to go back this way and go up that elevator and see where we end up. I'm hoping it's the upper levels, since we seem to have done a bit of a, a round trip. Come back to where we've started. And again, something like this, holiday-esque, isn't it? Like a, a foot spa. <laughs> and uh, I believe these are like Japanese, um, what they use at like Japanese temples and shrines to kind of cleanse your hands. There's lots of really weird and wonderful little environmental details here. So much to kind of unpick and think about what inspired it and why it's here. I hope this elevator works for me. I'm sure it will. I also like the kind of persona style um, font that pops up when it comes to interact with things like this. So bold, interesting. There's one of the characters I can talk to. I might just ignore him for now. I have a concern though. <laughs> It's locked from the other side. Ah. Curses. <laughs> That's where I want to get to over there. <laughs> See if we can find another way over. Oops. <sighs> Knife through the heart. What a lovely name for a bar. There's a story behind that too. <laughs> I love the kind of waterways that they've worked into this environment as well. Um, almost acting as some sort of barrier between the kind of high class and low class 
essentially, areas. Ooh, had a bit of a wobble there. Do a little hop up here. Oh, I could just take a dip in that pool. Hmm. It's such a kind of weird and interesting. Keep using those two words, don't I? Weird and interesting place to get yourself lost in, too. How rude. I'll immersive, I'll immersive, I'll immersive sim my way around that one. How dare you lock the door from the other side. Back in the kind of resort esque style area. I'm sure you've noticed the absolutely amazing soundtrack this game has, too. He says as the music dies. It's so... I don't know... Uplifting and considering the kind of subject matter of the game really quite, you know... at odds with what's going on in terms of, like, tone. It's so kind of... quite jolly and you know, here you are looking into the murder of a group of mass murderers so it's interesting it's interesting kind of I don't know what the word would be juxtaposition I guess so this is the syndicate's HQ the big important buildings Look at that kind of beveled edge and black windows. Hide ranges everywhere. Interesting. Grow hide ranges in our garden. And uh, I believe the, the hydrangeas where they kind of... Where several large flowers circle, smaller flowers is like indicative of Japanese hydrangeas. Um, but these like large balls of solid large flowers are kind of... I don't know, perhaps more European species? I don't know why I'm talking about flowers. island. Ah, look at that structure over there. So, 
I hope you've enjoyed this uh, this wander around paradise iteration number 24. It's an absolutely fantastic game. Truly fascinating and unique and you know as soon as it came out this was literally a, a day one purchase for me. No bones about it. It has got absolutely stellar reviews and um, I really cannot wait to see what else the developers come up with next. Um, whether they'll um, expand more on this idea, if it can be expanded upon at the end of the game. Or whether they'll do something else that's truly unique. Just find a good place to, to look out over the horizon. Thank you very much for joining me again on Virtual Rambling. I hope you've enjoyed your stay.